Revolver Underground. What's going on, guys? It's D-Rock Revolver Underground here with Dylan Taylor. We are doing a Skype interview. What's going on, Dylan? <laughs> Not much. Yeah? It starts warm up in Nashville. So. Yeah, very nice. It's it's the one thing I like about, well, there's many things I like about L.A., but the one thing I like about LA, L.A. is it's it's very nice here all the time. It gets a little chilly, but it's not. there's no snow. There's no ice. You can go to the beach pretty much whenever you want. It's great. I love it. <laughs> That's what they tell us in school. <laughs> yeah. <here in> South. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Well, let's get right into it. Um, what, uh, you know, who who is Dylan Taylor? Um, <laughs> my guitar player said the other day, don't let Dylan Taylor happen to your kids. <laughs> so I don't know if that sums it up or, I mean, the music <laughs> is pretty edgy. Um, it's kind of a rock edgy thing. Yeah. Yeah. Rock and roll. I How long have you been doing this? Um, 11 years now. Wow. Wow. All right. Well, that being said, what kind of uh, what kind of changes have you seen in the music industry in those eleven years? Um, well, I mean, I've kind of changed too quite a bit um, since I first started playing because when I first started playing, it was a lot of writers' rounds and that sort of thing. I've gotten to branch out and go on tour quite a bit in other places, so that kind of made me look at Nashville a little differently. So I don't know if the changes I saw were because I was changing and experiencing different places in the music business in different places, or if it was just the moody whatever of the music industry. Right. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, well, you, you're actually you're originally from Atlanta, Georgia, right? Right. What, what attracted you to come to Nashville? Um, actually, I was 11 when we moved here, and my dad was opening up a branch of his firm in Nashville and so uh, he was also a musician in Atlanta okay so when we moved up here um, a guy named Harley Allen who was a songwriter and a bluegrass you know legend mm -hmm. he uh, kind of took me under his wing and that's kind of how I got started in Nashville doing what I did very nice very nice um, if you could create it what would be what would be the perfect writing environment Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> probably somewhere outside just really nice and you know peaceful yeah and uh, i'd probably if i had my say in it and i had like all the money in the world i'd probably have a studio in the middle of nowhere where you know you could just hang out for days and whatever comes out comes out and you can just layer it and do whatever whenever you feel like it nice nice feel well, like that's the, i think that'll happen yeah. <laughs> um, what do you uh, What do you like to write about? Um, everything. Um, generally, a lot of my songs are about you know the typical sex, drugs, and heartbreak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there are some happy ones in there too. It you know it varies. Yeah, just kind of whatever on a day to day. Um, yeah. What in, What inspires you? Um. Listening to like old music, not necessarily old. I mean, I don't consider it old. It was only forty years ago or so. Uh, Jackson Brown, Dan Fogelberg, and you know, like putting it on the old school turntable nice. and just groove into it. Nice. When I was younger, I used to have like big speakers that went with my turntable, and I'd put them on either side of my head and just lay on the floor, <laughs> crank it up. That's probably why I can't hear shit. Yeah, now. yeah. Well, that's that's. I mean. There's nothing better than that. Uh, I my father-in-law has a really good sound system back. He actually lives in uh, Iowa. He's got a house in Nashville as well. And uh, back in the the house in Iowa, he's got a really nice setup over there. And I just love hanging out and just turning it up. It's just it doesn't seem like it should be that good, but when you turn it up, it just it's amazing. It just it is. You just sit there for hours, which he does sometimes, and plays guitar and does his thing. So it's crazy. Uh, what is What's one of the experiences that you recall from, uh, you know, like one of the best fan experiences or best show experiences even? What's one of the best show experiences that you've had? Um, well, one of my favorite places to play, I have a few, but um, we play in Murphy, North Carolina sometimes at this place in the middle of the mountains. It's called Doyle's. And last time we were there, it's outside, you know, it's like this tropical type thing, but then you look out and it's like not 
in the tropical <laughs> place at all. Nice. Nice. Um, but they have great food, and they feed us, and we play for hours, and we got to play uh, Billy Jean just started going into it, and everybody started dancing, and we got to meet these really cool biker people that were, you know, in from Alabama, just riding and riding and riding. And there's nothing to do for hundreds of miles out there, so everyone comes to this bar, and they're just down for a party. Wow. That, that so, does sound pretty cool, actually. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, was I dig fun. that. I've been to a couple shows. I'm from the Midwest, so we there's a lot of um, going out in the middle of nowhere. That's what you do when you're from the Midwest. But, uh, <laughs> you know, there's there were several parties that I've gone to that are not – probably not as cool as that but you know you just kind of go out and have a good time sit sit around the fire if you can and um you know just play i love that it's just relaxing and just hang out with friends and enjoy it it's very cool yeah real people <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah. well do you have anything that um that is uh, most memorable something from a fan that is is most memorable that they said to you or done for you or something to that effect um this might take me a minute yeah. i've i've met like some amazing people over the years um i don't want to pick one and then leave someone else out right. that probably did something equally as <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah it's kind of a loaded question must my, my sorry about that <laughs> no it's cool it's, it might i'm just telling you it might take me a minute that's all right um, well we can come back to it you can think about it yeah let's come back yeah, yeah. to it How's the, uh, I, I just, actually, I just moved here uh, to LA from Nashville about almost six months ago now. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I kind of, I kind of understand, I kind of understand the scene, but in your words, how, how is the Nashville scene musically? Um, you know, there's a lot of layers to it. Uh, obviously, the country is the big, you know, you got the Broadway where you can walk into any bar down there and hear straight and you know, Haggard and all that stuff, and then Little Sweet Home Alabama later on in the night. Um, and then there's, like, another side. There's Division where, you know, the row is, and yep. people can go to hang out, hear a little bit more of the writers type thing, and then there's, you know, Bell Court where the college, like, Belmont writers hang out, and then uh, there's, like, the club scene, too, where mm -hmm. people like me can take the band and play originals and play stuff that isn't necessarily country, which is really cool. And for some reason, if you're good, they generally like you and are okay with, you know, they're like, we're okay with you playing rock. Just don't expect us to play it on our station. Right. Exactly. Thing. Exactly. It was, it was kind of interesting for me when I was there because I was a, a DJ um, on the, the buzz and oh. uh, as a rock DJ. And that was weird for me because I'm in, you know, the country music capital of the world <laughs> but I'm on a rock station as a as a DJ, so it was. But we had a, a really great following. It was really weird for me because I just I wasn't prepared for that. So um, it was it's an, definitely an interesting scene there, as, and even art. If you want to go as far as art, and, uh, you know, my wife's into fashion design and art and all that stuff too. So um, Nashville is definitely a place that you can uh, you, you can pretty much find any type of music uh, any any night of the week. It's craziness. It's so. true. It's it's pretty cool place to to hang out, but um, I think a couple of my favorites, and, and a lot of people aren't going to even know about any of these places that we're talking about. But I don't care. I do what I want. Um, <laughs> Puckets. Have you been to Puckets? Oh yeah. Oh we man. Play there a lot. Leapers Fork and oh. Frank. Oh, love it. I love it. Um, it's have, have downtown you, now. Have you been to that one yet? Yeah, I have. I haven't. I didn't get a chance to go. Is it equally as cool? It's cool, but it doesn't. For me, it doesn't feel the same because yeah. it's downtown. Yeah. But, you know, buckets. It's buckets grocery. It's supposed yeah. to be in the. Uh, I used to do the the songwriters nights there, and it was just um, there, there's really nothing like it. It was amazing. I mean, I did several hotel songwriters nights. I did you know other other events, but buckets was was very very cool for me. I just I liked it a lot, so it was very, yeah. very nice. People <laughs> can stay too if you're yeah. good food. The food. Oh my gosh, yes, the food is amazing amazing and that's sometimes i wouldn't even care about the music i just go for the food and just the music just happened to be there so exactly. anyway um <clears throat> that was awesome now i want to go to puckets i'm gonna have them see if they can deliver some food for me that's that's how that's gonna work play cross country yeah exactly um <laughs> actually i'm gonna be back in april i should probably go there when i get back in april that's what i'm gonna do yeah. it's settled it's gonna happen puckets <laughs> cool. here i come <laughs> um, so <laughs> now last year let's let's talk about this a little bit last year you had um 
an extensive tour schedule. What, what was this like? Um, we we were touring from like May to December. Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean not consistently without coming home. Right. But uh, it was awesome. I mean, my guys are great. My band guys, the personalities in the van are not like super over dramatic or anything, and we just get along really well and. They get along with people. You know, we're all good people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, they're a little bit better than I am, but <laughs> they kind of rein me in. Right. You know. <laughs> but um, no, it was amazing. It was. We went to a uh, Sweetbriar, or no, Sweetwater in uh, Fort Wayne. Yeah. Yeah. And so they're all engineers. We were kind of drooling. Yeah. Over. Th- yeah, they, they actually did. Uh, they actually were doing the Grammys last year. They're engineering the Grammys um, last year, and we got to do a behind the scenes interview with those guys. And they are just—they're all about what they do. They love it to death. They just—they—they they can't get enough of it. And I'm just like, you guys are awesome. You guys are are just geniuses. I just want a little bit, just a fraction of what you guys know. <laughs> I just want that. That's all I want. But, exactly. Yeah, those guys are awesome. Well, that facility is amazing. You can yeah. live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some yeah. of them might. Some of them might. They might. <laughs> That's awesome! Wow. Yeah. So that was uh. So, what? I guess what was the highlight of that? That whole stint, the whole from May to December touring situation. Um, you know, about halfway into it, um, just realizing how far we had come. Just from, you know, we played places where there were no people. We played places where there were a ton of people. And um, just like, I remember, I don't remember where we were, but I remember standing on stage thinking, man, these guys can do this shit. Like, we've done a lot better. We've come so far since we first got started. And that was just an amazing feeling to, and people appreciate it, you know. Yeah. We have numbers online that, I never thought we could hit kind of thing. <laughs> it was just really cool. It made us feel, or made me feel like we weren't just a bar band, you know. Yeah. We can go somewhere from here. Yeah, that's always a good feeling, and, and someday I will get there. But for now, I get to interview awesome people like you, so <laughs> that'll work for me for now. Um, well. Yeah. <laughs> Now you just recorded uh, you just recorded a song from from your future album here coming up. What's what's the story on this? Um, it's called Chicks Like Me, and it's, um, you know, it's a very, my music is very edgy rock, but it definitely has a country aspect to it since I was raised in the South, um, but it's just about chicks, you know, crazy ass chicks, you know, the ones that don't hang out with each other because they end up, like, (laughs) killing each other kind of thing, (laughs) you know, it's like, we respect each other because you know, we can handle ourselves and we don't need anybody's help and we can right. drink with the guys and that sort of thing. But we do not get within a hundred miles of each other because right. shit blows up. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, well, so when, what's, what's the, story? I mean, are you, uh, you just finished one, one song. When's, when's the album going to be coming out? Um, shooting for, well, we were shooting for spring, but, um, just to be safe. I'm gonna say summer. <laughs> right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, there's always something that happens. There's always you can you can plan and plan and plan. I've done several release dates, release shows, and then you know you get like with a week within, and we're like, oh, something's happening. We can't do this now. And it's like, but I've been promoting this. What? Yeah. But, but 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 yeah. So it's it's hard. It's hard to to know exactly what to say on that. But rock and it roll. Uh, and will that be will that be available uh, everywhere? Yes. I um, mean, not in, like, you know, Target and right. Walgreens. But online Thanks. and all that good stuff. That covered. But uh, nice. iTunes, Amazon, all that stuff. Very nice. Very nice. Rock so and roll. Easily accessible. Yeah, I like it. Do you prefer um, Do you prefer playing with the band or playing by yourself? Well, that's a hard question. Um, you know, I played by myself for a good... Uh, six years before I ever played with a band and um I like playing by myself but when we're on the road we have band show with a break in the middle for the acoustic set oh nice uh I come across different um acoustically than I do with the band but I definitely right now in this moment I like playing with the band better (laughs) because we haven't played 
out in about a week or two weeks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to play? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you have a you have a um, a festival coming up that you're playing. I think it's next month uh, in March. Uh, Gorilla Festival is that what it is? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Greg what's Greg this? Well, it's a uh, festival that um, goes along with South by Southwest in Austin. Ah, okay. Yeah, and so um, you know, it's you don't have to pay really. It's for the people who don't participate in like the businessy type thing of south by southwest <laughs> yeah you know they <laughs> sit up straight and they wear their ties and, right <laughs> um, i mean they come too but it's like the whole strip i guess it's sixth street okay yep um all those bars open up uh last year we played four gigs there this year i'm going to be going acoustic without the band and playing a new club called amped nice and i actually don't think it's open yet but it will be open then okay Maybe that's going to be the release or something like that, or the yeah. brand opening. Yeah, rock and roll, man. All right. Well, it's twenty. It's twenty thirteen, brand new year. We're just we're just fresh into it. Dylan Taylor, what what is going to happen in twenty thirteen for you? Oh, I'm going to become a millionaire. Yes, and, and you're going to adopt me. I'll I'll adopt you <laughs> and another puppy. Yes, I'll and bring the puppy with me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Is there anything that you're looking forward to? Um, you know, other than other than just playing gigs, your your albums coming out. Is there something that you're just you're you're excited about right now that you just want to share with everybody? Um, having to do with music or just in general? Whatever, in general, yeah, whatever. It's it's this is this is you right now. Whatever you want to talk about. Well, I am moving into a bigger apartment next yes. month. <laughs> yes, this is a super big deal. Yep. Because I've been living in a 500 square foot space with my dog, and it's a wow. pit bull, so he's not. <laughs> That's awesome! Uh, wow. Yeah, no doors, you know, so it's kind of like you eat in my apartment and you're eating in the bedroom. Yeah. Kinda. So, yeah. but uh, we're moving on up in the world. Nice. I dig it. That's good. Yeah. Uh, well, currently, um, you kind of touched on this a minute ago, but where where can we find you online? Oh. I'm on Facebook and Twitter. The Twitter is uh, at Dylan Taylor now. And um, Facebook is Dylan Taylor. And uh, you can find all that at DylanTaylorMusic.com. Um, and I answer my messages on Facebook. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. <laughs> I know I'm this. Big on that. <laughs> That's awesome. Don't ever lose that. That is awesome. Yeah, so. well. <laughs> you have to. Yeah, I mean that's that's how you connect with people. It's it's just uh, the right thing to do. It's like it's like uh, me having an interview with you, but Ronnie's conducting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that wouldn't <laughs> that doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Yeah, not at all. Um, uh, briefly, I wanted to cover this too. I forgot about this, but you're you're sitting at uh, Next Century Music right now. Um, I am. Just real quick, can you give a brief uh, brief summary of what's going on with these guys? Next Century Music is a. Uh... I am signed to a 360 deal here, which means artist development, publishing, and uh, management, or producing, one of those two. <laughs> but they, um, <laughs> you know, they pretty much do everything that needs to be done for an artist. Um, we have a studio here. This is the control room, and then my band rehearses in there, and it has like a vocal booth and everything else. But um, they're the business side of things. I guess. And yeah. my producer, Ronnie, he runs the studio. so And he does it very well. Yeah, big family. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I had a chance to interview you guys um, uh, oh, it was like two years ago, maybe, something like that, for Balcony TV Nashville, I think. And um, got to see the studio over there. It's, it's very nice. Uh, I would encourage anybody that's in Nashville to go check it out, go talk to these guys, because they know what's going on. So, um, you know, Dylan would say the same thing. You, uh, obviously you've signed with these guys. You, you, um, love them. So it's a good thing. Go check them out. What's the website for those guys? Next and next century music.com. Next century music.com. There it is right there. Dylan Taylor. Thank you so much for hanging out. Do appreciate it. And, uh, you know, good luck with everything. Uh, your album's getting ready to pop out. So that is going to be amazing. Looking forward to that. I'm going to be listening for those tunes to come through my speakers. It's going to be good stuff. Um, but one more time, give your website. 
DylanTaylorMusic.com. There it is right there, guys. Go check it out. And uh, lots of good stuff coming out of Dylan Taylor right now. That's all I got. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I'm E-Rock. Peace. Revolver Underground.